Hi, and welcome to Different Leaf, a show for new and experienced cannabis consumers. I'm Britt Smith. This episode, we're going to hear from two people with autism spectrum disorder about their experiences trying cannabis and CBD. Autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder which presents with a diverse group of conditions. Some people with autism have trouble with social interactions, reading physical cues, many have issues with their motor skills or how their brain processes their five senses, and for some, language and emotional regulation are daily hurdles. ASD is also often characterized by repetitive patterns of behavior or interests, hyperactivity, impulsivity, inattention, and sometimes repetitive movements like hand flapping or body rocking. Since it's a spectrum, what it means to be diagnosed with autism obviously varies widely. Therefore, so do the experiences of people with autism and those who try cannabis and CBD. But in the years since the states have started legalizing and since CBD hit the shelves across the world, more and more people with autism say that there are some versions of cannabis extracts that help greatly with some of their most impactful health issues. If you're interested in hearing about the most recent research into autism and cannabis, check out our episode from March 17th of 2023, Seeing Through the Smoke with Dr. Peter Grinspoon. Today, we'll hear from two adult men with autism about their journeys trying cannabis for common problems with people on the spectrum, like anxiety, focus, sensory processing, and physical discomfort. If you have the full issue of Different Leaf the Magazine handy, flip to the back page where you'll find an essay by writer Ian Donnelly entitled, I'm Autistic, This is What It's Like Getting High. In it, Ian talks about his experiences trying CBD, Delta 8, and THC to help his social anxiety and physical discomfort. This episode, we're going to start by chatting with Ian, who's based in California, about his experience finding the right balance of cannabinoids to help his ASD symptoms. And after we chat with Ian, we'll get a second perspective on cannabinoids for ASD with my lovely little brother, musician Spud Smith, to understand what helped him with his autism-related issues. We'll be right back to chat with our writer, Ian Donnelly. What age were you when you were first diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum? How did it show up in your life? So I was diagnosed four, five years old, but then I wasn't really told I was autistic until I was 13. Like, because my parents were able to detect something was off with like my speech and stuff like that, which is why they gave me intervention. And I remember dealing with intervention and like having a speech therapist, but I didn't know what it was for. Mm. And so I then was told after... I was in public school and middle school and I wasn't really good at socializing with other kids. And then my parents told me I was autistic. And then it really, honestly, I mean, autism has played a role in my life in so many ways, just because it's inherently me, but it really wasn't until over the last couple of years where I really started to sit back and really observe how it plays a role in my life. Yeah. Like, the thought patterns associated with being autistic, being able to process information, you know, how to pick up social cues, how to hold a job, how to do X, Y, and Z things. So yeah, it really wasn't something I thought about until over the last couple of years. You wrote for us at Different Leaf, the magazine, about your experience. And obviously, like you mentioned in your article, it's different for every person, whether or not you're on the autism spectrum. It's a different experience depending on who you are and what you're ingesting. If you're smoking it, if you're eating it, it's all very, very different. So let's talk about how you got comfortable with finding your way into the world of cannabis. What was your first time trying THC like? So my first time trying THC was in college, and this was about six years ago now, roughly, like six years ago. And I kind of just did it initially just because I was curious and I wanted to do it for myself because with college, everybody wants to drink and party and stuff like that. But it took me a while to really want to do that because I'm very much a person that's like, I'll do things on my own term. Mm -hmm. And so I did it and I first started off with joints and then 
it's funny because I did a joint two days in a row. And the first day I felt so euphoric and so kind of at peace with my anxiety I had at the school and stuff. And then the next day I did it again. And it was weird because I don't remember if it was a different strand or what, but it really didn't have an effect on me. And then afterwards I was like, okay, well, I tried it, blah, 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 blah. And there was another experience a year later in my second year of school where I took an edible with a friend and I had never tried that before. And I remember we were sitting in my apartment. It took like a good couple hours for it to hit. And when it hit, it just felt like my mind was like going at a train's rate. Yeah. <laughs> like going as fast as a train. And we were watching the first couple episodes of Umbrella Academy. And mm-hmm. if you were to ask me what happened in those first couple of episodes on, in the Umbrella Academy, I could not tell you because <laughs> I don't. Like, it just like, it really just kind of like set me like spinning, but also like not in a way that was like scary because mm-hmm. like I don't, you know, because I know some people can take too much. And obviously like if you take too much and you're not aware of what the physical sensation feels like, it can be a rough trip. And I've seen it happen to some people. But yeah, I just it was interesting. And then moving forward, I didn't touch it ever again until 2022. Because I have a medical condition called ulcerative colitis, which is in the same family as Crohn's disease and IBD and IBS and all that. And it got so bad, my ulcers in my colon, I had to leave work starting at the year in January 2022 and get on state disability. Mm. And a couple months into my leave, I mean, we all know what CBD is. Like I've heard about CBD and there was like a like a CBD store in the Old Town historic area of my town. I live in Temecula, California, so Old Town Temecula. And I tried CBD gummies and I liked those at first because they helped alleviate my chronic pain in my gut but it didn't get me high. Yeah. Because after my first edible experience, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that again. And so I did CBD for a while. But then ultimately, I couldn't get my CBD gummies from this person. And so I ended up switching to THC gummies at another store. And that's where this whole kind of journey into THC started. So it it wasn't like the first time you tried THC, you just realized like, yeah, this really works for me. It did take you a few times of trying different edibles, smoking, THC, CBD, Delta 8, you know, really narrowing it down before you got to to what worked for you. So so what did you find worked for you? So I remember for gummies, I started off with Delta 8 gummies. And it's funny. I went with my dad and we both tried, we got like a pack of 60 milligram Delta 8 gummies. And I'm six foot two, roughly 220 pounds. And I say that because one thing I'll, I would encourage someone is to take their height and their weight into consideration Mm -hmm. when trying gummies. But anyway, I tried the 60 milligram gummies and that really just kind of like numbed my entire body. And I was like, okay, this is a little much. (laughs) Like I felt like a blob. I honestly probably look like a blobfish in any pictures I have of myself. (laughs) And, you know, I did that. And then I dropped it to 30. And then for a while, 30 was like my go-to with the Delta 8s. And then I was able to kind of get a consistent ground on it. And I would take them before going to sleep, like a couple Mm -hmm. hours before going to sleep, because it helped me with sleep personally. And then after that, I kind of was curious about other types. And so I looked more into different gummies. What's the difference between sativa and hybrid and indica? Yeah. And for me, I remember I tried sativa first, and that really kind of set my anxiety actually through the roof (laughs) a little bit because I'm a naturally anxious person. And I think, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of all autistic people, obviously, but a lot of autistic people do deal with things like anxiety, whether it's social anxiety or environmental anxiety, whatever the case is. And for me, it really just took my anxiety and kind of just elevated it. And so I was like, oh, no, not, we're not doing Sativa again. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes, right. And then I heard Indica was, I was told at a dispensary that Indica was the exact opposite, that it helped relax. And so I did that. And these gummies at this point were only 10 milligrams because I was getting them from a dispensary that was regulated by the state. And I did Indica and that's been like my go-to because it helps relax after a long day of work. And I just find those to be the best for me in terms of 
relaxing, which I think you should be able to be relaxed. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's it's so interesting that there are different things that work for different people. And it's really like a, a self experimentation. And you have to be confident enough that you're, you know, you're going to get through it, even if it's an uncomfortable feeling, it'll be over in a few hours. And to keep on that train of trying new things. You know, I think it takes some courage to be able to do that. And like you said, a lot of folks on the autism spectrum deal with anxiety. And so this is one of the biggest reasons that people turn to cannabis is anxiety, right? So obviously you found THC like exacerbated that anxiety, but when you found the right dose, the right strain, the right gummy, that really started to work for you. As I mentioned, I'm going to be also, we're going to be hearing from my little brother who's on the spectrum as well. And he had a similar experience with THC. He wanted to see if it could help him with his anxiety because he'd heard the same stories. He took too many. <laughs> he was like, no, this is, yeah. this is not for me. I just wanted to say, just to touch upon that, it really is an experiment in terms of like when you're first getting into that realm, like you really kind of need to test it out for yourself. Mm. I always tell people it's better to take less of it and have it not work for you r- rather than start off too strong. Because like, even when I've started off too strong, like, thank God, like I knew it was just because of the effects of the gummies, but it could. And so I wasn't able to like, go totally insane when it (laughs) happens. It can be scary when you take too much because it it just you, I think sometimes people don't fully understand the effects it can have on you. Mm. It's similar to drinking in the sense of like, you got You just got to be moderate of, of like, of yourself and know your limits and stuff like that. Yeah, you got to be mindful and present, I think, is one of the best pieces of advice that I have heard is be present with the experience so you can really judge how it's making you feel. Something else that you had mentioned in your article is that uh, sensory overload is really big for you and for a lot of people on the spectrum as well. It's like you can have all five senses sometimes taking in all this information and it gets really, really overwhelming. And I think that that's what at least my brother said that he found the THC heightened all of his senses. So he he got very overwhelmed with that. And so just as a side note, CBD actually undoes that high. So if that ever does happen to you and, and you feel like it's too much, just have a little CBD on hand, right? That sort of levels you out. And some gummies have a mix of both. I don't do a whole lot of those. I'm very much a kind of strict THC type of person. But yeah, I mean... It, they do have gummies where there's bits of THC, CBN. I think it kind of just goes back to experimenting to see which strain works for you, you know? Yeah, for sure. So when it comes to the physical effects that you feel, are you looking for something that's a real body high or are you looking for something that's more like mind calming? It's funny because I feel like I've kind of dabbled in both at different points in my life. Mm. I don't think I've ever gotten to like a high high. I think I'm more into stuff that's going to just make my body feel relaxed and at home. Yeah. And just to touch upon the sensory overload aspect of being autistic, I think for me, it numbs my body to the point where my senses don't get overwhelmed. And then I start to really kind of understand who I am as a person Mm. in terms of getting in touch with like, you know, you hear self-help people talk about getting in touch with your inner child. And I think for me growing up autistic, where I'm conditioned to be a certain way in order to fit in and kind of suppress things that are innately myself. I think THC has helped me relax so that I can start getting in touch with that inner child and healing that inner child, which has been really powerful and kind of intense, but also cathartic at the same time. And so I think I personally would recommend, I think I even wrote this in my article that I think every autistic person should try THC. You don't have to be like, an avid fan of it per se, but I do think it's beneficial to at least try it out. And so that way you can at least know that there are other ways to help cope with the everyday stress of being autistic because, and I don't want to sound like a victim here when I'm saying this, but like being autistic sometimes it's funny because I wrote an article recently. I also write a lot about sexuality and stuff and autism as well. And I had it published through a, a major LGBTQ publication recently. And in the comment section, there was a lot of people with misconceptions about autism because I had come across or I, in my writing or as my 